Hi, I'm Dr. Samantha. I'm a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner with over 13 years nursing experience, working in mother baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum and labor and delivery. I'm also an IBCLC, perinatal mental health certified and maternal newborn nursing certified. Preeclampsia is a life-threatening condition for both moms and babies. Today we'll be explaining everything you need to know for yourself about preeclampsia. So click those like and subscribe buttons and stay with us. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. What is preeclampsia anyway? Preeclampsia is a very serious medical condition. It's the combination of high blood pressure and an organ system that's in failure. Usually the organ systems affected are the liver or the kidneys. If preeclampsia is left untreated, it can turn into a life-threatening complications for both mom and baby. Preeclampsia usually occurs after 20 weeks of pregnancy or after you've had your baby during the postpartum period. It's important to note the mild symptoms versus the severe symptoms of preeclampsia. Mild symptoms of preeclampsia include high blood pressure of 140 over 90 on two different occasions. Additionally, water retention and edema, especially in the legs, hands, or face are another symptom. Sudden weight gain of two to five pounds in a week or less is a warning sign. And also, when you're at your healthcare provider providing your urine sample, if they find protein in the urine, that can be a sign of kidney damage, which is a sign of preeclampsia. Signs of severe preeclampsia can include headache that will not go away, nausea or vomiting, vision changes including blurry vision, spots, or light sensitivity, abdominal pain, especially on the right side of your abdomen, infrequent urination or a hypertensive emergency where your blood pressure is greater than 160 over 110. Please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons so you can get our latest content. So let's talk about some of the risk factors that you may have for preeclampsia. The main risk factor is if you have a previous history of preeclampsia or if you have a family history of preeclampsia. This puts you at much higher risk for developing preeclampsia during your current pregnancy. Women who are pregnant with their first babies are at higher risk, as well as women who are pregnant with multiples. High blood pressure, diabetes, kidney disease, and autoimmune disease such as lupus may also increase your risk of developing preeclampsia. If you're obese or over the age of 35, or if you've had any complications with previous pregnancies, that can contribute to your risks. And finally, if you receive fertility treatments in order to get pregnant, this is, is also an increased risk of preeclampsia. Preeclampsia comes with a set of complications for both mom and potentially for baby. Complications for mom include the potential for kidney, liver, or brain damage. Additionally, mom may develop blood clots and these blood clots can sometimes travel to the brain and cause a stroke. Preeclampsia, if left untreated, can develop into eclampsia, and eclampsia leads to seizures and potential coma or death. For baby, some of the complications can include being delivered preterm or mom having a preterm birth. Additionally, the placenta may abrupt. This is when the placenta detaches from the uterine wall, and this is a medical emergency. And finally, babies whose moms have preeclampsia may end up with a low birth weight or experience intrauterine growth restriction or IUGR, which means they grow less than they should have. Diagnosis of preeclampsia is primarily made by noticing high blood pressures and finding protein in your urine. Your doctor will do some blood work to determine what your clotting factors look like your liver and kidney function. If any of these are impaired, that can also lead to a diagnosis of preeclampsia. Once this has been made, they will do an ultrasound to determine your baby's size and if your placenta is working well, which is called placental function. 
They will also probably perform non-stress tests to make sure the baby is doing well, biophysical profiles, which allows us to track the baby's progress, and Dopplers, which shows us the blood flow from the baby to the placenta and back. Treatment for preeclampsia starts with prevention and monitoring. Once you have started to show the signs of developing preeclampsia, your healthcare provider is gonna provide regular monitoring of your blood pressure as well as your urine to see if you're spilling protein. Additionally, they're gonna teach you how to do kick counts. Kick counts is where you're listening and feeling for your baby's movements in your belly. They'll give you the specific instructions on this, but it's very important to follow them and do them regularly. If you start to develop severe preeclampsia, they will likely recommend an induction of labor at 37 weeks of pregnancy. Prior to 37 weeks of pregnancy, if you are developing severe preeclampsia, they're going to put you in the hospital and do continuous fetal monitoring, which is where they put a monitor on your belly to listen to your baby's heart rate at all times. Vaginal birth is recommended using an epidural when you have preeclampsia, so you don't need to worry that it's an automatic C-section. However, if you turn to very serious illness or the baby becomes in jeopardy, an emergency cesarean section is possible. There are several medication treatments that may be used during the course of your treatment for preeclampsia. The first are antenatal steroid treatments. These are steroid shots that you'll actually receive in one of your large muscle groups. These are designed to mature your baby's lungs to prepare them for the potential of a preterm birth. The next one is magnesium sulfate, which is usually given to you through an IV into your bloodstream. This medication is designed to prevent seizures in mom and may also preserve some brain function for baby if baby is to be born preterm. Other medications include lorazepam and dilantin, which are used to treat seizures if eclampsia does develop. Hydralazine, labetalol, and nifedipine are all blood pressure medications that may be given orally or in an IV if mom's blood pressure is too high. And finally, nitropress or sodium nitropresside is given in the case of life-threatening blood pressure increase prior to an emergency cesarean set. I hope this video has helped you learn about preeclampsia and the warning signs you need to look out for. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button so you can get our latest content in pregnancy, labor, and early childhood parenting. Share this video with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at The Maternity Mentor.